How quickly do you think a company uses its data to enhance business operations? Minutes, hours, days or months following the data's creation. Now, the speed at which consumers conduct transactions nowadays in our world is accelerating. And in order to utilize data to make faster business decisions and gain a competitive advantage, the data should be of high availability. Now, to effectively utilize this data, companies need to move data from multiple isolated systems or servers to large data stores for cumulative reporting and analytic purposes. And this is where data replication helps. Data replication techniques ensure fast, reliable data access to the users who rely on it to make decisions and the customers who need it to perform transactions. On that note, hey everyone, I hope you guys are doing good and staying safe. Welcome to Simply Code's YouTube channel and in today's session, we'll be discussing about MongoDB replication. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed already, consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Code to stay updated with all the latest tech content and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's topic. So first, let us understand what is MongoDB replication. Now the database replication is the process of copying data from a database in one server to a database in another one, ensuring that the same data is available on more than one MongoDB server. Now the main purpose of replication is high availability and data redundancy. Now data is kept durable by having several copies or replicas stored on physically separate servers. Now replication is that process of generating redundant data in order to integrate and protect data accessibility and durability. Now by generating multiple copies of your data across servers, replication enables you to increase data availability. This is especially helpful if a server fails or your service is interrupted or if there are any hardware failure issues. Now, if your data is only stored in a single database, any of these events would make data access impossible. So if there is any breakage or failure of system or server failure, in that case, you need a recovery and backup option. However, thanks to replication, your application can remain operational even if your database server fails while also providing disaster recovery and backup options as well. So that is what MongoDB replication is all about. Now why we need replication in MongoDB? Now there are various factors that we can take into account on why we need replication but these are the main reasons uh, why we need replication. Now the first one is replication provides high availability of data. Now as discussed earlier, the main purpose of replication is to provide high availability and data redundancy by storing the data in multiple server rather than one. Now this data is available 24 by 7 to the user even if there are any issues with the uh, you know server side or any database failure as well. Now it also protects from any single server loss or hardware failures and service interruptions. So now data replication is must to keep your data protected right. So it ensures not only the high availability of data but also the ease of access especially in the event of any unexpected errors such as, such as a system crash, hardware or software based errors and etc. And finally replication ensures that data is always available to every client. Now no matter uh, the problem is that re what replication it does is it basically shifts the data into multiple uh, servers or multiple locations wherein the data can be available in each of any server that is present in the database rather than only a single server side where the data is stored. So let us now understand how does replication work in MongoDB. Now this diagram of MongoDB replication is shown in the uh, image which I guess you guys are visible visible it on the screen where a client application always communicates with the primary node and the primary node replicates the data to the multiple secondary nodes here. So we have a client application uh, wherein the data that is being read and write operations are taking place from MongoDB server and the driver as well. And we have a primary server here which basically does only write operation, write and read operation both as well. And then from there it creates a replication of the same database server into a secondary server. Now when I talk about server here, we have different nodes. Now replication, uh, you know, is done through a replica, replica set process, which in simple words, it's a group of MongoDB process to keep the same data across different servers. Now we'll be discussing what replicate set is in a while. So, but a replicate set basically must have certain number of nodes. Now, as you can see in the right side of the image, we have various multiple nodes that is servers, 
Now, in that we we need at least one primary server in order to perform replication on the data that is present in our database. The rest all can be secondary data. Now, a replica set must have three nodes at least. Now, one of them must be primary and the rest secondary ones. A replication structure can have up to almost 50 nodes. So let us now understand what is replicate set that we have been talking about. Now MongoDB manages replication using replica sets which are a collection of related MongoDB nodes. Now a replica set requires a minimum of basically three MongoDB nodes that I have discussed earlier. One of which should be considered as the primary node that receives all the right operations. And the, on the other hand, the, the rest of the remaining ones are considered as the secondary nodes which will replicate the data from the primary node. And if in case, if it, there is a failure at any level of, uh, you know, node structure or if, if there is any possibility of a failed node is recovered, it actually works as a secondary node again, but not as a primary node. So if you look at this diagram again here, now basically we have an application and then we have a primary node here, right? Now the primary uh, node is the member in which the replica set receives write and read operations, but read operations can be pointed out to secondary nodes as well, which changing uh, the con configuration at the moment to perform the query. Besides the replica set, uh, we can have only one uh, primary node at most as discussed earlier. And then the replication is done on the secondary node. So the secondary node is where the data is replicated to maintain a copy. A replica set can have one or more secondary nodes here guys. So basically the clients cannot write data to secondary ones, only they can read from them. So that, that is what a replicate set is all about. So let us just quickly recap what we have uh, covered here. Now to perform this, we need a minimum of three nodes, which is required. And in this operation of replication, MongoDB assumes one node as one of one node of the replicate set as the primary node and the remaining as the secondary node. So from within the primary node, data gets replicated to secondary node. And again, in case of any failure or any system error, the new primary nodes get elected in case there is an automatic maintenance or failover. Now, if you can see in the second diagram, we have an heart symbol here, guys, which is basically known as heartbeat mechanism. So each node is connected to all the other and a heartbeat mechanism is in place to call any other node. So the heartbeat has a configurable time for pinging the nodes and the default is 10 seconds. So if all the nodes respond with an acknowledge to the heartbeat, the cluster or the server, the, the nodes where the, uh, the nodes are present, it continues to work. And if one of the nodes crashes, the primary node, for example, an election takes place involving the remaining nodes. And when a secondary, does, a secondary node doesn't receive a response to the heartbeats after the configure timeout, it calls for an election. So this takes place until the primary node which has been uh, failed is recovered. So next let us discuss what are some of the benefits of replication. Now as discussed earlier, replication helps in disaster recovery and backup of data. It basically improves application reliability. Now, uh, by spreading your data across multiple machines, you can ensure that your application's data continues to be available even in the event of any hardware failure on any given machine or server in the replication group. It also, uh, the replication also minimizes downtime for maintenance. Now, since we are, uh, you know, transferring or locating our data into various multiple servers, it basically minimizes the downtime for maintenance also. And we can also achieve load balancing as well using replication. Now, we know that MongoDB works on a lot of structure data and it keeps on piling up on and on so if a let's say if a user is working on one of the database and which is having a particular server to its name while a lot of people also can work on the same server so that can cause you know a breakage or failure sometimes so in order to achieve that load balance you know to handle number of people and number of people that are working on the same database we can basically replicate the data that is present in our database to different servers and from which we can eventually achieve load balancing. Now, on the other side, we have certain limitations as well uh, with the usage of replication also. Some of them are higher costs and time constraints. Now, maintaining consistent data across, you know, disparate or various locations is often taxing in terms of resources. Now, if you maintain duplicates of the same data in various locations and distributed database systems, which results in great, greater storage as well as processing uh, costs as well, which ultimately results in time constraints while executing and handling the duplication process, which needs committed time from an in-house team or a people that are working on that database to ensure that the copy data is consistent with the source data that is all the data 
data that is being copied from the primary uh, primary node is actually same as that is being copied into the secondary node. And finally, redundant data is being stored in the secondary uh, server or secondary node, right? So it basically takes more space and server processing is also required which takes a lot of time so those were some of the limitations or you can say disadvantages of a replication in mongodb and that brings us to the end of today's session guys uh, so let us just quickly recap what we have discussed in the uh, today's session now mongodb replication is one of an important process which makes data available across multiple data servers so instead of just store, uh, storing a data at a one particular site you can basically shift it to across multiple data storage locations now data redundancy and uh, availability and load balancing are one of the important factors that we've discussed uh, in replication which are important you know for maintaining such a huge uh, database you know data that is being constantly changing and ever evolving mongodb also supports replication with the help of replica sets as discussed uh, replica sets are basically a combination of various mongodb instances each having a single primary node and multiple secondary node now this process is done on keyword that is heartbeat mechanism which is a method of finding out the current state of the mongodb node in a replica set now the heartbeat signal basically matches or verifies whether the data is being generated in the primary node and it is further uh, displacing into the secondary node so replicate set selection is used to find out which mongodb node should be the primary node and finally we talk about scalability performance and high availability which are the paramount uh, factors in uh, mongodb replication now when i talk about scalability guys uh, scalability as the data volume increases the complexity of accessing data and working with data also increases so we replication in place multiple data copies are available allowing users to not only increase their data but also recover any previous version in case of any errors or failure param uh, performance is also very important when you're replicating certain data now when data which is available across multiple servers it not it not only makes accessing data easier but makes recovering from unexpected and sudden failures much easier so replication uh, basically ensures data availability and security all the time so with replication in place there's no need to worry about data failures your data is you know safely stored in other locations so in situations where your primary source of data fails you can e easily access the same up-to-date data from a secondary reserve or the data that is stored in secondary server which highly promotes data availability and which is another uh, key factor of uh, mongodb replication so with that we have come to the end of today's session guys i hope you understood what is mongodb replication and why it is important now we can execute this on the host site uh, but it will take a lot of time so the video becomes quite long but we will be discussing uh, the entire process on how to create a replication in your mongodb database in our next video modern applications are getting bigger and bigger making it more and more expensive and occasionally even impossible to find a single powerful machine enough to handle this huge data load now utilizing the combined capacity of various machines in one way is one way to solve this issue this is where sharding comes into picture Sharding in MongoDB is made to accomplish exactly that so that no single machine must store all of the data or carry the entire load on itself but instead divide the database into smaller pieces. Sounds interesting right? In today's session we will be going through MongoDB sharding concept and we will understand how it is implemented, the use of it and how exactly it is performed and we will finally understand the advantages of sharding in MongoDB. So without any further ado let's get started with today's topic so firstly what is sharding in mongodb now sharding is a method for distributing a single data across multiple databases which can then be stored on multiple machines this allows for large data sets to be split into smaller chunks and stored into multiple data nodes increasing the total storage capacity of the system so for example let's say i have a database which has you know 2 million users uh, that are running on my database frequently so the single machine has a capacity to only uh, hold 2 million records in that now for instance my business is growing and with the ever increasing demand of data the data is being piled up in in more uh, you know numbers now for example the 2 million has been raised into 3 million and in that case the operations on that database can be quite difficult because there is a huge traffic of data that can be uh, you know 
applied on that database for in that case i can basically split the data database into two different you know instances where i can make two machines or i can uh, basically store the data in two different servers wherein i can have two different capacities now let's say i've divided the two million to one million and one million now i further can have a total capacity of total four million that is two million and two million in each database so this is what a uh, sharding is based upon sharding basically distributes the process and stores a single data set into multiple databases now the purpose of any database distribution is to enhance the scalability of the applications uh, and sharding is an excellent way to keep the data safe across different resources in mongodb database sharding is an achievable by breaking down big data sets into simple subdivided data sets across multiple instances now this single database cannot handle a database with large data sets right as it requires large storage and bulk query operations can use most of the cpu cycles which slows down the processing of the system for such scenarios we need more powerful system so now one approach is to add more capacity to single server such as adding more memory and processing units or adding ram on a on the single server then it is basically known as scaling now we can do scaling in two ways first one is we have sc vertical scaling vertical scaling basically refers to adding more resources for example adding a new cpu or increasing the ram or or instead adding a new disk size to your server based on your demand and next we also have horizontal scaling horizontal scaling involves adding more and more processing units of physical machines to your server or databases so it is basically used to divide a large data set across multiple systems and serve a data application to query data from multiple servers this approach is basically called as horizontal scaling and mongodb handles horizontal scaling through sharding now let us now understand why we exactly need mongodb sh uh, sharding guys now we learned that in our previous uh, tutorial about replication wherein we learned that replica sets gave us the ability to hold data in multiple databases and thus given us a certain level of fault tolerance and data duration and however this approach has certain limitations as previously mentioned guys all write operations in replication go to the primary nodes as you can see here we have the primary node here it is going to the uh, secondary node and all the write operations are basically done on this primary node and all the read operations are basically processed to the secondary node which makes it the uh, you know crucial thing of any system right the, this means that if the system grows this primary node will be overused so in that case eventually it will be limited with hardware limitations like ram number of cpus and disks and etc so in that case it it is quite difficult you know that a database can be of efficient way to uh, you know address the demand or process the data within the database so that is where mongodb sharding comes into picture now since it is a limitation of uh, replication that is where uh, as i said sharding comes into play when there is when database may struggle to handle more and more data and the query traffic increases in that case you need to distribute the data into simpler or uh, secondary multiple machines now another reason is mongodb instance is unable to manage write operations as i said earlier uh, the database in replication you know you are basically copying or duplicating the data from one uh, mongodb database into another in that case it becomes difficult for one single database to manage all the write operations right so in that case we need sharding next memory cannot be outsized enough in case your if your data set is large for example if the if the database is working on large data large data sets in that case memory cannot be you know over uh, settled or you can uh, incorporate uh, memory you know if if the data data set is too large and finally which also impacts the uh, database maintenance also and vertical scaling is nowadays too costly and in that case mongodb sharding comes into picture so that those were some of the reasons why we need mongodb sharding so let us now move ahead and let us understand how mongodb sharding works now before mongodb sharding uh, the working of Mongo, mongodb sharding we need to understand the mongodb sharding architecture now implementing the concept of sharding can be done with the use of clusters so when i say about clusters sharding clusters are basically the combination of multiple shards mongo's processes and configuration servers 
So if you look into this image, we basically have an app server wherein we have various routers and we have a MongoDB, Mongo's instance or MongoDB, Mongo's process. And we also have configuration servers or config servers, which are basically the replica sets. And we have sh different shards where we, uh, we are basically trying to, you know, break down uh, a single huge uh, database into further, uh, you know, shards or simpler pieces. Now, this is done with the help of a sharding key. Now, on sharding a MongoDB data set, a shard key is automatically created by default. The shard key basically can be in form of an indexed field or indexed compound field that will be used to distribute the data among the shards. Generally, the shard key is used to distribute MongoDB collections documents across all the shards where the key consists of a single field or multiple fields in every document. So that brings us to the main part, which is how MongoDB sharding works now. Now MongoDB uh, sharding works by creating a cluster of all these MongoDB instances consisting of at least three servers, which we'll be discussing in a while. So the shared cluster or the MongoDB sharding cluster consists of three main components, which is basically shard, mongos and config servers. Now, when I sh talk about shard, a shard is basically a single MongoDB instance that holds a subset of the sharded data. Shards can be deployed as a replica set to increase availability and provide redundancy. Now, the combination of multiple shards creates a complete data set. For example, uh, if you're trying to break down, uh, let's say a 5TB data set, which can be broken down uh, further into four shards, each combining of 100 GB of data from the original data set. So that is what a shard is all about. Now, next we have Mongos. Mongos acts as a query router, providing a stable interface between the application and the sharded cluster. The, this MongoDB instance is responsible for routing the client's request to the correct shard. And finally, we have the config servers. Configuration servers basically store the data and the configuration settings for the whole cluster. So if you look at it, uh, look at this diagram, uh, we have a router which is having a MongoDB instance and we have configuration servers wherein we have primary, secondary servers in that. And also we have shards where we are basically dividing again into primary and secondary. So the application communicates with the routers, which is basically the Mongos, about the query to be executed. Now the Mongos instance consults the config servers to check which shard contains the required data set to send the query to that shard. And finally, the result of this query will be returned to the application. So you need to uh, understand that it's important to remember that the config servers also work as replica sets here. That is why we have primary and secondary, uh, you know, nodes here as well. So this is how basically uh, how MongoDB sharding works. Now, the idea is to have basically uh, multiple replica sets with multiple primaries uh, that will divide data and load it among themselves. And each of these replica sets is basically called a shard, but multiple shards are not enough to achieve the proper functionality of this kind of system. So, and that brings us to the final uh, component or final, uh, you know, thing to our uh, session, which is basically the advantages of sharding. So in database sharding, the gives a, a lot of advantages. Now, one of them is increased storage capacity. So when data gets distributed across the shards in the cluster, each shard contains a subset of the total data in the cluster. And on increasing the data volume, the additional shards grow, which leads to expanding the cluster storage capacity. Sharding also increases the read and write throughput uh, in the database also, guys. Now in MongoDB, the read and write workloads are easily distributed across the shards in the sharded cluster. It allows each shard to process a subset of the cluster operation. So both the read and write performance can be directly scaled horizontally across the cluster by increasing the shard count and which again ultimately results in high availability of data. Now with an uncharted database, uh, an outage in one database shard has a caliber to uh, you know, impact the entire application and lose, lose in its functionality or even completely stop it. However, with a sharded database, if there is complete unavailability of one or more shard replicas, only a few parts of the application or the website which is available to some users. However, the other shards continue their operation without any concern. And finally, sharding facilit facilitates horizontal scaling. Now, one more reason, uh, you know, developers love database sharding is that it facilitates horizontal scaling, which also means scaling out your uh, databases. This means it allows you to have parallel backends and carry out tasks simultaneously without no, with no hassle. 
whether the focus is on writing or reading operations scaling out can add a big advantage to enhance the performance and also eliminate complexities so these were some of the main advantages of uh, sharding guys so that brings us to the end of today's session now you might wonder how sharding and replication are different from each other so whenever you're thinking about sharding or replication you need to think in the context of you know the write and the update operations that you're performing on your database so if you don't need to scale write uh, write processes then applicate then replication as it's fairly simple is a good choice for you on the other hand uh, let's say you know if your workload is mostly on write operation uh, most of the times then at some point you'll hit a uh, you know a right operation that is compulsory needed for you in any, in any case right so if write request comes um, comes then mongo basically blocks other write request right so these are all the write request blocks until the first request will be done so if you want to scale this write operations and want to parallelize then in you in in such case you need to implement sharding and with that we have come to the end of today's session i hope you have learned how sharding and replication commands work in mongodb and also how to configure them to connect with mongodb database thank you for watching the video guys if you found this tutorial informative and helpful give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and colleagues if you have any further queries regarding any of the topics covered in today's session feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be more than happy to help resolve all your queries at the earliest Stay tuned to the channel for more such amazing content and if you want to learn more about MongoDB concepts and topics we have a dedicated playlist on our channel so make sure you check that out until next time stay safe and keep coding